Welcome back to this afternoon's session. Before I introduce our next speaker, I'm just, I'm, I was reminded earlier, um, and I don't know if it's still true for those of you who've been watching, but I, I was told yesterday that there was a definite lack of men on the stage. Um, ladies, can you remember a time when there was a definite lack of women on any stage? Surely not. But I feel uh, that comment was made to me yesterday that all of us who have been speaking from, from the stage have actually been female. Extraordinary, especially at a technology conference. But I think it, it says quite a lot about where women have come. But our next two speakers this afternoon are men, you'll be pleased to know. So first of all, I'm going to introduce uh, Matt Chilcott. Um, I should have said before I sang happy birthday, um, my name is Karen Lewis. I work at the University of South Wales, based in Cardiff, and we're one of the partners on the Communities 2.0 project. And for the last two and a half years, Matt has been with us um, doing PhD research looking at digital in inclusion in the wider context and particularly within the field of social justice. He's coming towards the end of his research and is just writing up his thesis. So if he's got big bags under his eyes and matchsticks holding his eyelids open, that's because he's working around the clock to complete it. Um, so Matt's going to give us a short overview, a snapshot really, of his research um, so far. So over to you, Matt. Thank you very much, Karen. Good afternoon, everybody. I thought it was going to be difficult enough to uh, follow an awards ceremony and a, and a hearty lunch, but a chorus of happy birthday has probably topped that as well. But uh, I'll try very hard as I'm concentrating on trying to put three years of study into 15 minutes of um, information sharing to, to give you uh, a good insight into my understandings of digital inclusion and the way forward for digital inclusion in Wales and the wider world in the near future. My study has anchors. Um, anyone undertaking PhD um, research programs has a focus. And um, I've been very privileged to work alongside the community's 2.0 program over the last three years. And I've really been focusing on investigating digital inclusion as a global issue, an international issue. I've been exploring how technologies are shaping the future of our society and trying to identify which particular ones are going to have the most impact in the very near future. I've also been looking at both of these, considering what are likely to be both continuing or new social justice issues we will need to face. Well, here it is, evidence um, taken of, from the internet world statistics of who around the world is using the internet. We have a population in the world of 7.2 billion people, and there are approximately 3 billion internet users in the world today. Coming closer to home, the European Union has identified that they believe that there are 100 million non-internet users across Europe last year. In a global context, the digitally excluded are in the majority. So we have around 40% of the world's population having an internet connection today. When the internet started up back in uh, the early 90s, it wasn't until 1995 that we had just 1% of the world's population accessing the internet. The first billion internet users was reached in 2005, and the third billion reached in 2014. Despite the UK having less than 1% of the world's population, we have the ninth largest population of internet users. And clearly, that provides such a strong evidence base of why the work of Communities 2.0 and other digital inclusion practitioners is so vital in our society. Looking at the, uh, the users' charts, it's also important to understand that as in 2013, it was the languages of English and Chinese that dominated the internet in terms of the World Wide Web, web pages, what was the content written in. It was predominantly English and Chinese. And this in itself is an important social justice issue. I was fortunate enough last year to join a Welsh government liaison program 
and go and meet with researchers over in MIT in Boston in America. In the autumn of last year, they published new research that called for international digital inclusion activities to focus on developing local web content in local languages. This is because the research community fear that the internet has the potential to significantly reduce the number of the world's 7,000 languages that we have at this time and really have a negative effect on the vibrancy of our diverse cultural heritage. Clearly, this may have implications for Wales as only 0.1% of the web content of the world is in Welsh. Such knowledge reinforces the value of the Welsh Government's investment in key online sharing platforms such as the People's Collection Wales and adds a key importance to ensuring its sustainability. It may be of interest to you to note that in terms of all of the internet sites uh, with the Welsh language, it's Wikipedia Cymraeg that remains the most visited web space in the Welsh language. The importance of continuing to seek to address digital exclusion in Wales is also reaffirmed by the annual Web Index report that's published by the World Wide Web Foundation. This organization is championed by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, founder of the internet. This report places the UK in fourth place in the world as a country which gains the most economic, social, and political benefit from engaging with the web. In terms of the importance of the internet to our society, we're up there. And we're up there with very, very rich nations. Key point for consideration. In previous years, the UK was actually higher up the uh, web index, but we've fallen down as a consequence of recent revelations about privacy and our use of the internet. Looking to the future and considering my research and looking at the different types of technologies that uh, are both web and world-based, clearly it's the Internet of Things, or IoT as it's abbreviated to, that is currently creating a technology step change that will alter our experiences of the web. And what that really means is that the majority of the data that's previously been created for the web has had a human origin. In the future, physical and virtual objects will create the majority of data on the web, leading to new forms of interactions for people with their surroundings. Now, there's lots of practical examples of this that we live with today. Many of you will be familiar with uh, the advert for the British Gas Hive app, where you can control your heating from a distance and uh, using smartphone apps. Only this, this month, um, the UK government have been talking about wanting the UK to lead uh, in the development of driverless cars. There's cities around the world where they're using this technology to really improve environmental impacts from their traffic networks. It's really starting to take hold. In 2014, Professor Bill Dutton from the Ox Oxford Internet Institute argued that society and policymakers need to prepare for the impact uh, that IoT actually brings to society. With the move from billions of people as a network society to trillions of things being online within the next decade. This change can bring both positive and negative experiences for citizens. Digital inclusion activities will need to keep pace with these changes. For those wanting to explore exactly which IoT things are happening around them today and in the future, um, I'm recommending people take a look at the new Thingful web space. And this was launched in January of this year by Harvard University. And it allows you to explore the internet of things that are happening right around you just by putting in your location. It's the application of the Internet of Things technologies that can bring social and economic benefits. And when they're applied, when they have social and economic impact, we come across another range of terminology. 
smart cities, smart towns, smart regions, and smart communities. This is the language that's being embraced by Europe and America looking at the next phase of our digital world. Many of us treasure our smartphones and tablets, and in the future we're expected to benefit from a diverse range of in, uh, smart interactions with our surroundings. I think when we look at the geography and the social populations of Wales, one of the challenges in both a policy and an activity context is ensuring that Wales really continues its emphasis on communities and developing smart communities. The conference yesterday identified already potential new digital divides between cities and towns and the countryside. It's important that we embrace technologies, but we look at Wales as a whole and we look at developing a smart community. As I mentioned, Europe and America have really fully embraced smart cities and communities as concepts, and there's been a huge amount of investment and programs already run. One of the things that I think it's important to draw back from the constant discussions about the Internet of Things is to consider really how we apply this to the benefit of our communities. And this definition from San Diego State University sums it up for me. It's choosing, as we have done in terms of the development of our world, the right tool for the right job. One of the key requirements for success of smart communities projects is open data, open networks, open hardware. Wales today is not in that situation and it is one of those areas in terms of future competitiveness we need to try and address. Wales are, however, pursuing smart city opportunities and quite locally uh, in Newport, this is a, a news item from um, uh, earlier this month, um, Newport have successfully trialled a community safety network in the city centre using smart technologies. That's enabled the police and emergency services and the local authority to actually predict um, when problems are going to, going to occur uh, in, in, the, in the city centre environment, to manage tra traffic flows more effectively. And the success have been, has been such that they've announced this month that their investment is now being made to grow that network to make it city-wide. It's a smart city in its infancy, but there is a, a great opportunity for Newport and other cities and other communities and towns in Wales to really embrace some of these technologies and have a positive impact on society. Barcelona, one of my favorite cities. I'm not sure how many of you have been there, but winner of the 2014 Innovative European City. Barcelona are recognized to have been actively applying smart approaches to improve their citizens' way of life in the city. And I like that approach. The focus is on improving people's lives. The technology is applied, but to a common end goal, improving people's lives, crucial. To look at some of the examples of what's happening in Barcelona, there are magically 650 free Wi-Fi points all across the city, and that includes the beach, unbelievably. Can you imagine Wales with a coastal path surrounded by Wi-Fi points to do inc incredible tourism and family experiences. They've managed it in a city. There are hundreds of signposts around the city with both RFID tags and QR codes to share public information and also to really try and ex um, engage this Wi-Fi network as creatively as they possibly can. There is such an enormous volume of apps relating to Barcelona that can meet so many requirements of both people's daily lives and visitors' experiences that I was really quite amazed. In fact, I couldn't use all of them when I was over there. But probably one of the most exciting projects that I think really should be cascaded to Wales and the UK is an investment in a simple-to-use smartphone tablet that supports socially isolated older people in the community to have direct access to their families, to volunteers, 
and to their both health and uh, social care support workers. It's a joined up approach where technology is being applied in the best interests of older people. But there's more to visits to Barcelona than uh, just being concerned about free Wi-Fi. There's the social and cultural side of things. And one of the things that I was most impressed with as a lover of technology and of real ale was the future of pubs. And I have here an example of the beer cab in the university quarter of Barcelona. They have 40 real ales from across the world. They have screens that uh, reveal a little bit of storytelling about each of those beers. Sensors are on the barrels and they feed into a display behind the bar to let you know how much of that particular beer is left. But also integrated social media feeds uh, through Twitter and Foursquare, you're able to check into the bar and have a digital community within the bar itself. The staff are informed about uh, how much beer that they need to replace barrels, etc. And punters really have a very different experience to uh, traditional pubs as we have in the UK today. I really love that, and I think if I was more entrepreneurial, I'd be setting up a chain of these in the UK today. But if you would like to know more about that particular pub and other ones that are like that, please catch me after the, after the event today. There's other language being used, and probably quite important language. Both in the UK and in Europe, there's been an, um, an embracing of the term digital social innovation. And this really brings together social entrepreneurs, educators, and technologists to continue to invent new applications on the web for social good. Their activities are termed digital social innovation, and they really do focus on addressing social issues and injustice. In order for them to survive and in order for them to prosper, Nestor, who published a report about them this, uh, this month, really stressed to decision makers and policy makers that we need open data, we need open hardware, we need open networks so that such activities can thrive and technologies continue to be used for social good. In conclusion, looking to the future, there remains plenty of room for creativity in applying new technologies to enhance communities' quality of life and to compel non-web users to begin to engage with digital technologies. The work of the Communities 2.0 programme has had such a positive impact in Wales, and I hope very much that future intervention measures continue to have the same quality um, impact on people's lives and enable them to really get the benefit out of engaging with digital technologies. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for a pretty much a whistle-stop tour through what is going to be, I think, a really interesting piece of work, which we are hoping will be available to the public, knowing the way academic <laughs> systems work probably in about six months once you've submitted. No pressure there. Um, but I think it's a, you know, a really, really worthwhile piece of work that will be available for everyone to see, and we'll make sure um, that anybody who's interested gets a copy.